G'day, Trooper Cody and Steve, one of our light horse videos, another one of the ones that I love because it's a request, but funnily enough, it's not actually a request. So what happened? One of my videos was on Facebook. A person saw it. That person didn't contact me, they contacted another person. And when they wrote to that person, they said, I wonder if this bloke could find out about our relative. That's it. They didn't say who the relative was or anything. So I contacted that person and said, look, I'll give it a go. What, would you, what do you need to know? So it turned out that this person was a relative of Charles Norris Callow. C-A-L-L-O-W. So I said, yep, look, I'll see what I can find out for you, and I'll let you know. So I started looking, and I thought, bloody hell, this would make a great video. I say that because have you heard of Charles Norris Callow, Major, First World War, First World War from of day one, right the way through to 1918. But wait, there's more. After 1918, he stayed in the light horse. He was in the Middle East in 1919 when the Arab Rebellion starts. He's with the light horse that are formed up to fight, preserve peace in the 1919 Rebellion. And then he comes back, and it's 1927. And he's still in the army. And he is in charge of the horses in Canberra for when the royal family come to Australia to open the new Parliament House, 1927. So, have you heard of him? Well, Charles Norris Callow was born in Victoria in 1881. He died in Albury, New South Wales, at a significant age, but also a very troubled man, troubled with alcohol, violence, and all due, without a shadow of doubt, to post-traumatic stress. He was also deaf from his service throughout the entire First World War. So, his wife, Doris Brewer Welch, was born in 1899. They got married in New South Wales. And on the 2nd of December, 1911, the Australian Army decided it needed to adopt a permanent vet, veterinarian corps. When they set it up, 1911, you were going to earn between 300 pounds sterling and 450 pounds sterling per year. If you remember, in an earlier video I've recorded, to give you some idea, that in 1914, a pint of beer in an Australian pub would cost you threepence, three pennies. You can work out from there that that salary was an exceptionally good salary. So in 1913, a couple of years later, the army decides it's going to greatly expand its veterinary service because clearly horses, the light horse, transport, artillery, remember, pulling the guns, wagons for food and things. Horses are paramount, good vets are really important. They want to massively expand the vet corps. They advertise for applicants. You could only apply if you already had some tertiary vet qualifications. So, on the 16th of April, 1913, Charles Norris Callow goes to the Sydney 2nd Military District where he sits the army exam for people already qualified, remember, as a vet, 
to enter the army. And he fails. He fails that exam. So what happens is that World War I starts in 1914. Each quarter, a little booklet comes out in Australia, and it is called the Quarterly Army List. In that book, it records every rank and name and posting of everyone in the Australian military. In the September issue, the quarterly September issue of 1914, Charles Callow is recorded there as being a lieutenant vet for the second military district. So there's no record, but sometime between the 16th of April 1913 and September 1914, he's gone from failing the entrance exam to being a commissioned officer in the vet corps. So what then happens is his history, because he's not so well known, his history is a bit hard to track down. What happened between September 1914 and then moving to the Middle East or the Western Front is not accurately recorded. And I say that because there's an odd newspaper clipping or reference of him here and there. Some say he went to the Middle East and some say he went to the Western Front initially. What is recorded for certain is that on the 3rd of April 1916 he is recorded as arriving at the Western Front. The 3rd of April 1916. Now there is a story that I have been unable to track down that he was involved in rounding up whalers and brumbies from the Australian high country to be of use and service in the light horse. So that could well have been between the September 14, 1914 date and arriving in uh, April 16 on the Western Front. I can't find reference to that. I'd love to know if the people know what is involved there. One of the things about the light horse was they bought horses off the average person. Lots of people donated their prized horses to the light horse, but the world is full of scam artists and Nigerian lawyers, and lots of people turned up with rubbish horses to sell to the light horse. That is why they quickly adopted a policy where vets had to be involved in vetting the horses in Australia. Could have been Norris, uh, Callow, Lieutenant Callow, but April 16, he's on the Western Front. He is attached to, our, to the artillery, which is looking after the barrage horses, the ones that pull the cannons and the caisson and the ammo. And so the next official record is on the 21st of January, 1917. He's now been promoted to a captain. He's the vet for the 3rd Division Artillery and the 7th Field Artillery Brigade. And what is recorded is he's the vet in charge and it is recorded that his horses are being kept in a diabolical condition. This is no reflection on the man. This has nothing to do with him. Can you imagine if someone like me or any of you that love horses are in charge of a bunch of horses and given nothing? And that's, can you imagine how horrendous that would be to you as a person? No wonder he ended up with post-traumatic stress because it's recorded that the conditions were appalling. It was wet, raining, it was snowing, and the horses were being kept in an open field, no stables, no shelter of any sort, no trees. There was no food for the horses, and they were all being kept on a single picket line, one line. And these are the horses that are sick and injured anyway. It would have been absolutely heartbreaking. We'll come back to that a bit later with something else that happens. So we then move on. And the next recording of him is in September of 1918. The war is not over. What has happened is that the Germans made a massive attack called the Spring Offensive. They pushed back the Allied line a huge distance. 
There was then a counter-attack. The counter-attack was very successful and the Allies pushed the Germans back again and at, at that time of September, Callow was a major by this time, been promoted again, still in the Vet Corps. He is the major for the entire 9th Infantry Brigade animals. And he is now at a place in France called Strazel. It's spelt, if you want to look it up, S-T-R-A-Z-E-L-E. -E -L -E. And if you look up the original photos that are on the internet, there's a piles and piles of rubble. Because as you can imagine, it was a place that was attacked, counter-attacked, attacked, counter-attacked. Counter That's where he had his vet, set, vet area set up. By then, we now move to the 24th of January, 1919, because on the 24th of January, 1919, he is recommended for the Order of the British Empire. You can look that recommendation up on the Australian War Memorial uh, website, and there you will see Basically, in a few words, he is recommended for the Order of the British Empire for his outstanding service to animals and horses during the entire First World War. He goes back to England after the Western Front, where he goes to the uh, Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons in London, and he's studying there. He's already a fully qualified vet, a major. He's undertaking additional studies. At some point, he is transferred to the Middle East so that in March of 1919, he is in the Middle East with the light horse. He is due to be assisting in the 1919-1920 Arab Rebellion, but is hospitalised. The records... I have not been able to access why he was hospitalised. I presume, as it was for four weeks, that it was the Spanish flu, influenza. Uh, but I can't confirm that. So at the end of his career, Callow had received the 1914-1915 star, the British War Medal, and the Victory Medal. He had been recommended for the order that I mentioned before, the order of the British Empire. He was one of those that was unable to come home until the 31st of August 1920. His career is hard to follow after 1927 and the opening of Parliament when he was still in the army as the vet in charge of all the horses for that ceremonial activity been unable to find when he left the army. He died in Amatex Street, East Albury in New South Wales. All of, from my understanding, all of his personal records, photographs, were donated to the Albury RSL. There is a story in the Albury Wodonga News Weekly, issue 278, dated the 22nd of April 2015. That is a full page story showing photographs of him and uh, a, a bit of a story about him. That story is written by a friend, and so some of the things said by the friend differ to official records, but there's a, a great story to read there. The Albury RSL, I haven't contacted them. They are supposed to have a lot of his personal memorabilia and photographs. And an ancestry.com.au has a lot of additional information about his family tree that's protected by other members of that family tree, but I'm sure people were interested they could find out that additional information. So there we go, we have a story about a man, a commissioned officer in the army before the war started, in the conflict the entire time of the war, 
involved in things after the war, stayed in the army after the war, rose to the rank of major, deaf, post-traumatic stress, and is thought to have died a pretty lonely, disturbed man. And if nothing else, this video is a tribute to Charles Norris Callow, a vet who clearly loved animals and loved horses and who would have been devastated and permanently damaged by the horror he must have seen. Forget the horror of war, which is bad enough, but the horror of what he would have seen with horses. <laughs> My God, how, how could a man cope with such things? Cheers. Till next time. Thank you.